oh my God, I hate that song. I'm like, right, right. But why do we hate it? Not because Auntie Claire wouldn't stop singing it badly. It's because it's such a foundational core spirit truth that the enemy knows if we have that, he's got that. Hi, and welcome to the Story of Podcast, where storytellers disrupt. I'm David Noronha. And I am Fabiano Altamora. And before, before, before we dive in, he gets me every time. I don't know why I let him do that to me. Before we dive in, please remember to like, subscribe, follow, give us that five-star review. And I dare you to share this episode because there are some juicy nuggets in part one. And now I'm we're in lot. part two with whom... I mean, I was getting blasted in that episode. Yes, you were, and I've you're heard, always a little blasted. Did, I think I'm <laughs> fairly certain you show up a little tipsy. May, may, as, as, as somebody who doesn't drink, just on the Holy <laughs> Ghost. So Dave, we talked in the last episode just about like, I, and I didn't even know it was going to go that way. It just kind of the Holy Spirit led it that way. But like emotional, your emotional health journey and how you got into the industry and how you overcome and the rhythms that you use in the word to really keep you stable. Now, we'd love to hear about your your experience and some stories because I've, I mean, you are a consummate storyteller and whenever you speak, everybody listens and everybody gets emotional, including myself. Now, th- this is one step, step that Dave told me and I, I want to lead with this. He's been in the industry, 15 years. Him and Wendy have brought 500 people to know Jesus in those 15 years. Dave, tell me how you approached going on set as a believer and how the hell did that happen, dude? Man, it happened by accident (laughs) the first time. And I was like, I was literally like this, this is happening. Like it was that kind of reaction. Someone in the improv troupe that I mentioned in the last episode came to me and he pulled me aside and he said, Hey, uh, do you ever have like bad days or, or like terrible, like life stuff? And I'm like, I'm the poster child for it, brother. What do you mean? <laughs> and he goes, you're always freaking happy. How? I said, well, I wasn't always this way. I said, but I will tell you this. I really believe wholeheartedly that my strength in my existence is the joy connected to my relationship with God. I said, you may have heard people in the, I said, do you come from like church, religious world issues? Like, oh, yes. I'm like, okay, so remember that old song? The joy of the Lord is my strength. And he goes, Oh my God, I hate that song. I'm like, right, right. But why do we hate it? Not because Auntie Claire wouldn't stop singing it badly. It's because it's such a foundational core spirit truth that the enemy knows if we have that, he's got nothing. And he was like looking around and thinking and, I could see the wheels churning and he was like, oh my God, it's the only thing I've ever wanted and it's the only thing I reject. He said those words. I'll never forget that statement from him. I said, you know, the greatest thing about you rejection, you using rejection as a protection tool. He's like, what? I said, the greatest thing about that is that all you have to do is say, I'm done. And now here comes joy. And he goes, how do I do it? I said, you just did, brother. And he sat there and his eyes filled with tears with a big smile on his face. And he was like, I already feel different. I said, that's because you and Jesus are tight now, brother. And he was like, I never thought that was going to happen. From there. Every set we've been on, over 500 sets in our career, we never mention anything. We go in worshiped up. We go in prayed up. We go in worded up. 
and we say, God, I'm going to dominate with excellence and be the best, most professional, crushed town human being on this set. And whoever I'm there for, you just show me. Because we always know we're there for someone. Yeah. Because the why is the reason he gives us the platform. Right? It's not the platform for the why. It's the why for the platform. Everywhere we go, there's some human being or more than one that is the reason we're there. We are heat-seeking missiles shot out of heaven to land and explode the funk on people's lives that the enemies put there so that God can get through. So every set, commercial, industrial, film, television, voiceover, doesn't matter. Stand up, doesn't matter. It is literally about who am I here for? I did a stand up thing down in downtown Atlanta um, in uh, October. They called me and they were like, yo, our headliner canceled. Will you just come down and help us out? We'll give you a few hundred bucks. Just come do whatever. I'm like, 100%. So I go down there early and I said, hey, what? Because God said, ask about the audience. I said, hey, tell me about the audience. He goes, he looks down. And he looks up and he goes, uh, let's just say you and I will be the only white guys here tonight. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, got it. <laughs> so God brings up these two stories of when I dated this black girl in my very short stint in college and the hilarity that ensued from me going to her little black church. And that was my 12 minute set those two stories i got a standing Standing ovation ovation. wow (laughs) at the end of the standing ovation shaking hands doing the thing husband and wife comes up and says we looked you up while you were on that stage how is it that you are a god guy and you're in this entertainment industry i said explain your question a little more I was like, I don't really have the, the, the context of the way you put, can you just help me out? And he goes, we left the church because they told us there's no way God would call us the entertainment industry. So we haven't been to church in 10 years. How are you so just God guy? I said, listen. The reason why they told you he would never call you is because he would never call them. Oh, so the only thing they know is to define your call by their call. Just because the only way they understand calling is by their own doesn't mean they're right. I said, you pray right now with me. And I looked them both husband, wife, husband, wife, husband, wife. I said, Lord, lead them to the church that you've already provided for them to nurture their call, ground them and root them in your love and your anointing so that they can rock this world for you. They were holding hands so tightly. She was grabbing onto his arm and they were both like shaking. And I was like, Hey, (laughs) wait till you see what he does. I was just cracking up. I'm like, you're in for it. You're so, you're so in for it. But that's the kind of thing. They come to us. I got so many stories about how Wendy will be on set and some lady will sit down next to her and be like, oh, this freaking industry, right? And Wendy's like, no, what do you mean? And here, boom, boom, here's this huge conversation of her ministering to this heart, this wounded heart, this person who's got these layers of just things that the enemies put on them. And there's Wendy just chiseling, peeling them back, letting the light in, making all the roots grow the way that they should. Happens every single time. Dave, I got, I got to ask you, like, I mean, obviously you, you've had a lot of victories and and a lot of wins in this department of like showing up on set and, and witnessing for the Lord. Have you ever found yourself? Because I mean, if there's, if there's anything that's going to hold somebody back, it's the fear of the bad version of this story where you get fired and they tar and, you know, mm-hmm. pillage you <laughs> for bringing up yeah. the name of Jesus. This is the big fear is that if you bring up the, the name of Jesus on set, you'll be tarred and pilloried. 
Have you ever had a bad moment? And if so, how'd you navigate it? Never. Wow. 500 sets, never. And here's why. This is the key to it that a lot of not quite fully mature Christians don't get. It is the calling and the equipping of the craft that will open the door for me to speak. It is not the preaching of the word that opens the door for the craft. Now, that is reversed in the church, right? A lot of Christians have to understand these are two totally different entities and places and callings. If I'm called to minister in the church, I'm preaching the word. I'm bringing down the house. Boy, I'm burning this thing to the ground with the word. And then it will open the door for craft and opportunities and the stuff, right? Always. That's what the church is about. Word first. Not in this world. Come on, dude. He's mic freaking drop. Better understand your place. So good, dude. So good. Now, what does what does false humility and what does arrogance of religion do? (laughs) Know my place. I'm a child of the king, boy. Ron Howard. Let me tell you why I'm gonna tell Ron Howard when I get on set in my little co-star U5. Watch. Let me tell you what's going. No, let me tell you what's going to happen. When you get up all up in there with that attitude, you ain't going to be anywhere on that set more than 15 minutes. That's what's going to happen. And they're going to replace you in about 38 seconds with somebody who's just grateful to be there. So yeah. you lead with your, literally, obviously you prepare. You said you come prayed up, worded up, worshiped up. You show up on set. Lord, who is it that you sent me here for? The, the call to the set. You've been called to set for someone, but what you rock up with is excellence. And then the excellence is what is unlocking those hearts and those opportunities. People are first responding, at least they think they are, responding to your ability. Sure, you've got the presence of God upon you. That's palpable and typically smells really beautiful. Like like Mm -hmm. that example of the improv guy, like, man, you're just happy. Joy, right? The incense of joy was just coming up off of you. But I hear you say you've got to rock up Mm -hmm. being excellent first to have a seat at that table. And the thing is, you can and you can smell the authenticity on day. Correct. You know, there's there's no motive other than you're there because you love it, and you're there because there's an assignment but you're amazing at what you do, but he's also amazing at being a believer. But you've done it when nobody's watching. So now it gets to emerge from you because it's coming out of every freaking pore. Yeah. And here's a great example of, of, of exactly this, this scenario. I'm on set on, on this show called High Town. Okay. And uh, it hasn't, the episode has not been released yet. Uh, for believers, probably shouldn't watch it. Um, but uh, season three, <laughs> let's just leave it at that. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity. Um, but uh, I prayed about even auditioning, right? I, I pray for every audition that comes in. Yes, no, Lord, you lead. Um, audition, booked it. I'm on set doing my thing, right? Uh, the director is a foreign director, had a great time, great rapport, just crushed. Well, in the middle of shooting our scene, I'm a detective in this scene and I'm on the phone and I'm mad at a guy. Well, in the middle of it, they're having this major problem with a light that the city was supposed to turn out because it's on the middle of a street. So they're like, hey, we need, uh, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes to get the city to take care of this thing. So I go into this little coffee house that they rented as kind of our home base, right? Um, right on the street for us to wait. And so I'm, I walk in there, I get a little hot chocolate. I'm waiting because it was pretty cold that day. And I'm standing there and one of the other actors comes in and he goes, God, man, this just sucks. I was just feeling my freaking groove. And then they got to stop everything. And now I, now I got to start from scratch. And he looks at me and he goes, don't you hate that? I said, I think what I hate more is that you think so little of yourself that you think you have to start from scratch. And then you take a sip of your hot chocolate, right? (laughs) And then I was like, (laughs) and he was like, what? I'm like, what makes you think that your gift 
and your calling is so shallow that just because they called cut and we have to take an hour break that it's going to run out. (laughs) And he was like, I don't know how to respond to that. (laughs) (laughs) That's literally what he said. He's like, I don't know how to respond to that. What I love about that too, man, is that was not a gentle, that was, that was kind of a a straight up Jesus response. Cause what I love about Jesus is like, Jesus even said to the blind guy, like, what's your problem? What do you want? He's like, what do you mean what I want? I want, I want to not be blind. (laughs) And, and, you know, here, this guy, here, this guy rocks up and you kind of, I'm going to imagine you don't always karate chop people. Did you just feel in the spirit that you kind of had to like check that thing? 100% Hundred percent, because he was one of those guys pretending to be an alpha male. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. You know those guys who pretend. So right? you had to yeah. silver back him a little bit. He he was that guy, <laughs> right? He 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 was that dude that walks around the gym like, huh, I could live that, but then leave. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's curling fives in the corner. Yeah, exactly. Right, 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 right. Um. So, I, but but I I can honestly truly say. I loved him so much. I could not let him sit in where he was. I could not. How did that play out with this guy? He, so he, he literally looks right back at me and goes, how are you so freaking confident? Wow. I said, my confidence comes from what I know I'm called to, which is to be here to help tell stories. that's going to change the world, both for the people in front of the camera and the people behind just like you. I'm confident that God brought me here probably for you. <laughs> and he was like, and he goes, I'm like, ha <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> and he, he, we're sitting at a table and he goes, just like this. He's like, and then this happened. Ready? I was like, why are you saying, oh no, was grandma praying for you? And now you're like, oh no, grandma's prayers coming true. He went just like this. Word of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> what did, what did, what did you just say? Mm. I said, grandma been praying, has she? I felt God in that room. I said, listen to me. You ain't here to be the alpha male to show everybody how dope you are. You're here to tell stories so God can use you. Just get with him and trust that he's going to take care of everything. And then I'm sitting there and they're like, hey, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. And he was like, all right, man, I'll see you. I was like, hey, 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 sit your butt back down. He sits back down. I said, listen to me. You're starting full. I looked him right in his pupil, right in this dude's cornea. And I'm like, you're starting full. And he was like, all right, I got it. Pounded it. He, He held his fist out first, pounded it, got up, waited for five. They called me to set. We did our scene. He freaking crushed it. Come on. So our second scene. So, so there's a, uh, he, he comes, hugs me at the end. He's like, dude, I can't even freaking thank you enough for helping me, man. That was phenomenal. I said, Hey, call your grandma. And that, that's how we left our relationship. He hugged me. He's like, I will. I will. I'm playing with you. I'm going to find you on social. I'm going to ask you if you call grandma. He's like, okay. Okay. So he leaves. I walk back into the coffee house. The owners of the coffee house are a husband and wife. So like, excuse me, sir, um, can we get you anything? Uh, they said it'll be about an hour before the next scene. And if you want to hang, you want to order something, we can cook it. I was like, yeah. So I ordered a salad and they're making it and they bring it out. And they were like, hey, uh, we couldn't help overhear your conversation with that with the guy. Um, um, we are kind of in a weird kind of spot. And I was like, okay, God, you ain't done. <laughs> I'm like, here we go. So long story short, they tell me about their struggles in the business of a coffee house that God told both of them to leave full-time ministry, to start the coffee house, to have a place in the secular business world where believers and unbelievers could come to be ministered to by the touching of their gifts of cooking and preparing and serving. Okay. And he goes, starts crying. This adult man starts crying and goes, but we're in trouble. Somewhere in trouble. I said, I don't think you are. He said, No, I looked at the balance sheet. We're in trouble. I said, I don't think you are. I think you're not in trouble. 
I said, and the testing isn't a test to be like, pass or fail. The test is, hey, 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 they're going to call on us. Just leave it. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. He's waiting on you to ask for what you need, what you want. And he says these words, we just want to make it. I said, that's the problem. And the wife grabs his hand. And I said, let me tell you what heaven wants. Heaven wants you to win every award that this city has for businesses, for entrepreneurship. It wants you to have the greatest problem of any business, which is that, uh uh-oh, we have to expand. He wants you to live in that expansion, uh uh-oh, place. Because you got too much money and not enough room. You got all this business and not enough space. That's where he wants you to live. And he said, but how? I said, ask him right now. So we prayed right there in the coffee house. God, tell us what you want us to do. God gives me this strategy. I said, hey, here's what you need to do. Do you know anybody that works for the city? And she goes, well, yeah, my sister is like the uh, assistant to the general of blah, 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 whatever in the city. I'm like, here's what you do. Call her and, and ask for a retainer contract for the next five years so that all city events get priority at this place and they pay you a monthly retainer. And she goes, do they do that? I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) No idea, but try it. And then do that with every church within five miles, every business within five miles, everybody on this street, ask all of them so that your place is rented out four days a week. They find me on social media a week later and say they signed a contract for a monthly retainer that that doubles their budget. Wow. Dude. And I'm like, oh, okay, Jesus. What strikes me, Dave, is like, you know, I mean, I've been a Christian a long time. Because you're old. Because I'm old. I'm not as old as Dave, actually. Dave's older than me. Um, It's like how that boldness is actually inspiring, but scary as balls, dude. Like that (laughs) that boldness is scary as balls. You know what Dave is thinking? Dave is thinking right now, are balls actually that scary? (laughs) Why are we using that metaphor? Well... It's 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 a it's a it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a Sean Foyt saying it is kind of so it is totally you, yes. Sean Foyt saying so listen how do you like I mean you've obviously been to the edge of yourself you've got over yourself you marinate yourself in the word like e- listen I'm a pastor I'm on sets we're in school I have boldness in certain areas mm-hmm. I don't know if I've mastered my boldness on set yet you Here's know what I'm the saying scripture that God gave me. Here's the scripture that God gave me. Ready? And this solidified it for me. It says, he looked at his disciples and he said, you will be in situations where you do not know what to say. Mm -hmm. But don't worry because the Holy Spirit will speak for you. Yeah. He didn't say through you. He didn't say with you. He said for you. So I know that when I go onto a set, the only the only thing that is my responsibility is to just say, "Do whatever you want." Yeah. I don't know what to say. I don't know. I don't know what these people need. I'm so jacked up. I ain't the doctor, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, you got to do whatever it is you got to do, and you got to speak to them. You do whatever you want to do. And the great thing is, from a list actor to people no one have ever heard of. They literally sit there and to look back and remember what the Holy Spirit said is mind-blowing. Because look, there ain't no way it's Dave Pelleggi doing it. I am not the brightest light on the chandelier, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, And that's not some weird religious false humility. Yeah, I'm so self-aware. <laughs> I realize I ain't the brightest light on the chandelier. <laughs> so it's a legitimate, honest throw up my hands and be like, you get the praise for that one. 
because I didn't know what was going See, on. See, but I think this is one of the keys. This is one of the keys because here's here here's here's a place where you can get trapped. Mm-hmm. If you think you know, then you get in the way. Yeah. But when you know Oof. that you actually don't, then you actually show up and you're like, I'm gonna need you because right? Dave, I want to take a quick curve with you, just a quick turn detour. We can come back. What do you say to somebody in the church who says, Dave, why the heck are you on Hightown? Souls. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll play devil's advocate, but, 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 but your character, but your character did and said this, what do you say? How many souls did I win? Is me dropping the F bomb worth three souls in a story or no? <laughs> no. See, this is no, the, this is no. the, this is the okay. thing. Okay. My bad. No, I mean, this is Jesus. The... <laughs> I know there was a party. I know there was a big like, yay, but we got to uh, that F bomb though. I mean, <laughs> wow. No, see, this is a curveball. This is, I mean, listen, I, you know, it's funny. I, 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 I Fab knows this, but you know, we did missions when we were in school of ministry, and and I, um, I, um, I went to Matwapa, Kenya, and I sat at a club. We were trained and prepared. I, <laughs> I was told we were trained and prepared to go into this club and to sit down with men who were going to pay to sleep with little girls, and I sat across from a man uh, from Germany who all he was doing was just salivating over what he was going to pay for. And, and honestly, man, I sat there. I mean, I was a newbie Christian a couple of years in one, what, what three months of, of school of supernatural ministry. And I just couldn't find in the manual, the dialogue of what the heck to say to this man, because what I actually wanted to do was just take him in the alleyway and, 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 no and to kill him for what he was about to do. But then I actually noticed that there was a, a, a uh, a, a young lady standing off to the side. And even though guys were supposed to talk to guys, my stomach was so turned by this German guy. Instead, I just, I got up and I actually started talking to the girl and I made it very clear from the, she was trying to get me to go back. And I said, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not here for that. And I started asking her questions and all she kept saying to me was, you don't want to know anything about me. I said, no, actually I do. I actually do. Well, buy me a drink. I said, I can buy you a juice or a Coke, but I can't buy you alcohol. But I will, I will stand here and talk to you. And she explained to me how she had to give her, her two kids who were down the street pot so that they would crash and sleep while she sold herself one dollar at a time. Oh my God. That both that both of her parents and her brother were shot in an Ethiopian refugee camp. And this is why she was in the position that she was in. Then I introduced her to the to the young lady uh, who actually headed the ministry and I handed off. And this is what I knew in that moment. I am beyond unqualified for this moment because I still want to kill you, but I'm supposed to turn every cheek and love Jesus. And, and you, I don't even know, my life experience is so radically different than yours. I don't even know how to help you. So I'm just, but she literally just cried because I just asked her how she was, yeah. who she was, and I listened to her story. But what I knew in that moment was that I, couldn't wrap my head around in nothing that I had learned about theology in church or even in school of supernatural ministry could help my brain wrap around how Jesus actually saw this moment because the F-bomb theology that we're taught is if this, then that, right? Like if you say that, then, then you shouldn't be in the church. You shouldn't be in the business. So how do you respond to this kind of thinking, Dave? How, how, what should artists be thinking who love Jesus? They love him. And they're trying to figure out whether they should say the F-bomb, play the pedophile. I don't know what. How do you handle this, man? So I literally, it is a it is the scripture God gave us that brings us peace in every molecule of our career. Mm. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. It doesn't say the mileage of the mileage of the righteous, the years of the career of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. No, 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 no. The steps. Because here's the thing. The audition that I got two days ago for a demon-possessed priest (laughs) who ends up um, 
killing everyone in his church and having his way with all of the people in it, both male and female, bright, vivid, on screen, haven't had it. And then in the end, he dies and justice becomes. I prayed when I got the email. In, I, I haven't even read, I hadn't even read it yet. You have an audition. Oh, great. Double click. This is what happened to my chest. Hmm. Haven't read anything yet. And it went. And I was like, oh, okay, God, uh, what's up? Read the first line. Didn't even ask a question. Nope. Yeah. Got it. Actors access, decline. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm unable to get this done. Sent. Done. <coughs> it's the steps mm -hmm. of the righteous. Mm -hmm. Every step you have to ask. Mm -hmm. Every step, and you have to believe in the sovereignty of the creator of every molecule of the universe. That if he says yes, there's a reason that is higher than your reasoning. Mm -hmm. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You cannot function as a creative and forget that his ways are higher than your ways mm -hmm. and that his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. You cannot function as a creator called to be in whatever industry mm -hmm. and forget that Jesus came for the people, right? If we are there in an industry, it is for the people. Mm -hmm. mm. And every single step, I knew when he said no to that audition the other day, he's going to send somebody, but just ain't me. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not like he turned his back on him and he's going to send fire from heaven. He's sending somebody. It just ain't me. And the thing is, it's, wow. it's being misunderstood and it's like being, being willing to be misunderstood. I mean, I'm not going to mention the show or anything, but I, it's funny. I even catch myself doing it sometimes. I don't hold myself to the same standard. Mm. I'm like, I, I have no issue doing certain things. Right. But then I see, and I know this guy's an outspoken believer. And there's this one scene where the actress, he's in the shower, she goes in and she's, and I know he's a believer. And I even catch myself going, oh, interesting choice. Interesting choice. Don't know if I would have done that. But the point is, I can't judge him knowing that he loves Jesus and he's doing that because he's so vocal about why he chose to do these things. And I'm, this is no commentary or judgment, but it's like, we do to an extent have to be willing to be misunderstood and then go, this is what I felt between me, my wife, my family, my community that I should should do it. Listen, the misunderstanding thing, we got to get over that one because I mean, Jesus was maybe the most misunderstood, you know, human being on, on the planet is still misunderstood today. So being understood, this need to be understood, frankly, is fear of man. Yeah. Because it's, it's kind of like a nobleized veneered version of yeah. uh, understood actually means like, you know, do you approve of me? Exactly. I'm afraid of your judgment and, and, and so on and so forth. So Dave, I want to, I want to <clears throat> get underneath this even further. Yeah. So for you, it may or may not even be about the story that's being told or the character of the character that you're playing. It is simply, Father, are you asking me to go? And then, Father, for whom have you asked me to go? And done. <laughs> that's it. Wow. And, here, and, and here's the bluntness of it, okay? You were talking about being understood. It is a, in my opinion, <laughs> let me put that out there. This is Paul's disclaimer. Just, just in case you misunderstood. Yeah, this is Paul's just, disclaimer. Exactly. My word, not the Lord's word. <laughs> just in, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but here's my thing. I really, truly believe that for we, for us as Christians to demand to understand everything is a sin. Ooh. Okay, please do tell further. The Bible says to bring your requests with thanksgiving to him, and then he will give you a peace that surpasses your understanding. Oh, gosh. Huh. And will guard your heart and mind. So peace is not a blanket. It is a fire-filled, on-blazing warrior to guard your heart and your mind. When he says do something, it is not your responsibility to understand anything. You shut up and do it. The master said go. <laughs> Mm. The commander said, there's a soul that the devil has his grip on 
that is about to pull to hell for eternity. If you say no, they are screwed. Get in there and do it. That's the way I view. You want to know why I view it that way? Because he had his freaking grip on me. Mm. Oh. I know that demon's voice. I, I know it. I can look at someone across a room and go, you son of a, you're talking uh-huh. to them too. Uh-huh. And I'll freaking heat seeking missile go across that room and be like, hey, by the way, that voice you're hearing is a liar. He talked to me too. I don't care who it is. You mean to tell me I got to understand? That's unbiblical. Dave, I have to, I have to tell you, completely I'm freaking un- shaking. No, I know. Listen, you know, I have to admit something to you, man. I actually always read the surpassing my understanding actually in the following way. This was like my own paraphrase and I didn't realize it until you, you broke it down for me right now is in that God is going to blow my mind. What I mean is he was going to surpass my understanding by going, Ooh, no mic drop, but I still understood it. What I did not get until right now is that I'm actually, maybe I still won't understand it because it is so beyond mm. me. I'd never read it that way. Wow, wow, wow. Well, and you know what he asked me? I'll, I'll tell you where, where that conviction comes from in me. I mean, I'm Italian, so I'm passionate about everything, right? But, um, but he, when, I, when he gave me that revelation, I struggled with it. And he said, and, and I heard this in my mind, the, the comedian God that talks to me in comedian lines sometimes, <laughs> right? He's like, oh, I'm sorry. That's right. I forgot. You want a God you can understand. Got it. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I love that. Ow. Ow. I love that God razzes you as a fellow comedian exactly. who just went up. Yeah. <laughs> it, remind, it reminds me, I just watched this thing with oh, Kevin Hart God. and Chris Rock. You know, they were touring together and they sold out Madison mm-hmm. Square Garden like, I don't know, like five times or so. Anyway, so uh, when Kevin Hart was starting out, I didn't realize Chris Rock was like his his senior by, so he was kind of like mentored by him and by some other comedians. And so when young Kevin Hart would get up, some of the other comedians, these tiny clubs, I mean, you, Dave would know this because, you know, you, you, you do this, but like tiny, tiny clubs. Clubs where like you're like six inches away from the audience and they would one of the I can't actually say what the other black comedian would say, but he would say, like, shut your face up. He's yeah. like, read. the. They actually threw a phone book on stage and said, read this. It's better than your <laughs> act. It's funnier than you. Yeah. yeah. See what I love about this. I love that you are undoing i love that your relationship with god this razzing comedian and i know i'm sure he speaks to you in the voice of james earl jones as well when it's super poignant and and the hallmark (laughs) moments but i love that he (laughs) but i love that he knows you so well that he has a way of speaking to you that is just like consummately just you dude even if it's the comedian in that moment well, and you know what's interesting? I, I did ask him in that time of revelation, but God, what if I'm seeing something that I don't understand, but my faith doesn't believe you? Because mm. there are things I look at, Fab, like the example you gave. I got friends who do stuff and I'm like, huh, Jesus definitely didn't tell you that. <laughs> right? Like I judge, I, 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 I wave the judgment flag. It ain't even like I'm trying to hide it. I'm like on social media, well, everybody pray for so-and-so because obviously they missed it. And I'm like, God, tell me what do I do in that mm. time mm. again? A scripture ca- came and said, the prayers of the righteous avail much. much. Yeah. So number one, you pray for you to go to another level of understanding, another level of trust and faith and belief in my sovereignty that I'm functioning with them the way they need to function and learning and teaching them. And then you better be praying also that they are drawing close to me. And here's the thing that hurts my heart the most that he asked me in that moment. He said, how many times have you seen a believer do something and the only thing to come out of your mouth was judgment and critique? Yeah. Why would you not let the prophecy of the depth of relationship and my anointing and my favor come out of your mouth on that? God, thank you that you opened that opportunity. And I pray in Jesus' name that you draw them close to you, that they never stray from you. 
and that the devil is bound on their life and that your anointing grows in them and that they hear you more than ever and that they'll never make any decision in this industry or any other that's apart from your perfect will. Mm. Why doesn't that come out of my mouth instead of, oh, <laughs> somebody missed it, right? Like, <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah, so good. And so that really brought me to the place of like, you know what, God? I willfully, joyfully say, I don't understand. It, and thank you that your peace is guarding my heart and mind and it surpasses my understanding. I just freaking trust you. I'm just so inspired. Me too. I'm man. like freaking shaking inside when you were delivering that thing. I was like, I'm I'm going to have to go off mic because I think I was going to have a, a deeper shaking encounter with the Holy Spirit. It's like, dude, I... He, there aren't really many words, bro. It's because it, it, every time I hear you speak and a new element that I see of you, a new story, testimony, but every single freaking time the Holy Spirit comes out of everything you communicate, dude. I can't even imagine. I'd love to be a fly on the wall on some of your sets and just seeing how you operate as a freaking spiritual ninja. Dave, let me let me ask you a question, man. Um, you mentioned in part one, and if you didn't hear that one, you absolutely have to go back and hear that. You mentioned that you got to the edge of that bed with the gun in the hand because of this cu these cumulative events, you know. And you mentioned like the little boy, five yeah. and and so on and so forth. Looking back now, if you could time travel and talk to that little five year old, that little ten year old where grandma came up hopefully with some candy and, and, and prophesied over you and said, Hey, what would you tell 10 year old you? Never, ever again in your life, try to fit in because you already belong. <laughs> wow, bro. It's been a, an absolute privilege to get to know you. I'd never met you before. Um, I already have a, a, a list of things I want to go home and talk to my wife about, some practices. I want to do the, <laughs> the, you know, the lies and the truth thing, man. I'm mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm I'm putting that down as part of one of my my disciplines. But you are going to get to meet me in person very soon. Hey, in Atlanta. Yeah. Hot Atlanta. Hey, town, baby. Come on. <laughs> yeah, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Well, well you Dave, know, last go on. thing, uh, last thing to just, because I feel like I got to share this, the belonging thing. You know, fitting in my entire life, like I said, like I mentioned before, I changed myself to fit in with whoever I was around. It mm. didn't matter. Any industry, any person, any business, anyone who was ever in front of me, I'm fitting in because it's the only thing that made me feel the feeling that I wanted to feel, which was acceptance, right? Because my, I didn't define my identity. When we realize that we already belong you don't have to fit in. Mm -hmm. You could fit out <laughs> as long as you know that you belong. Right? We all look to fit in, to fit in, to fit in because we don't understand we belong. Mm. And when you get that identity that you know you belong, that's when all the fear goes away and the trust just resonates there. You know, I, I had... Uh, a shoot last week, corporate thing, right? Like just full on corporate town USA. And the egos are like somebody grabbed the amp and went, right? Like <laughs> just through the roof, ego town. We have talent on there. We're doing this corporate -y thing and all of the stuff. And I walk on set. They've already been preparing. I just talked with the client and I'm, I, I feel the feeling that something is off. Hmm. And I can't even put my finger on it. And I just said, God, what? And he said, you got to pray. Mm. With, and I mean, it came out of me without me being able to think, truly. I said, everybody, lock it up. Everybody's like, oh, director said, lock it up. What's happening? I said, everybody, bring it in. They think it's a safety meeting. My PA is like, hey, we already had our safety meeting. I'm like, that's all right. Come on. So everybody gathers around. I'm like, everybody real quick. I feel the vibration that something needs to be handled. <laughs> yeah, so I like the language. Let's just go ahead and take care of a little something real quick. All right, everybody bow your head. And this is all I said. God, we're here because something super important has to be communicated in a safety aspect of this industry. Give us wisdom to make sure it's done the way you want. Amen. 
Everybody looks up. I'm like, hey, every single one of you are appreciated. I love y'all. Let's knock this thing out and make it the best. Ready? Everybody's like, yeah. Right. So then they run and they go, go back to their positions or whatever. Well, the client comes up to me and says, I need to apologize to you. Ooh. I said, for what? When you were in that pre-production meeting with our other client, man, I was out here telling people the way things should be done and and that I didn't want certain shots and certain things and all of the stuff. And I was just so angry that nobody freaking listened to me in that meeting last week and that all this stuff was done. And I was just gonna, and, and he was like just writhing, right? Like just trying to tell me this story. And I'm like, hey, 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 look at me. God don't see it, that's fine. You're good, let's go, let's crush it, let's get it. Don't worry about it. Come on. So we go through the day. Magical day. Ended early. Saved wow. money and time. Everybody's <laughs> excited, right? It was a great day. <laughs> At the end, he comes up and he goes, hey, are we okay? Are You're not mad at me or whatever? I'm like, mad at what? He was like, well, remember I told you I was out here before the thing and the whatever? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he was like, what? I said, listen to me. Love doesn't keep a record of wrongs. I love you. We crushed it today. Let's go. We got a bunch of editing to do and I want to go home. So let's go. <laughs> so we pound it and leave. This guy's texted me scriptures that he's found every single day <laughs> about love and partnership and working together, like all these things. We never talked about any of that. He's just texting me. Wow. I knew I belonged at the head of that production for a reason. And it was to bring everybody to, into prayer, to get everything right, and for God to touch his heart, to let him know the devil's trying to spin you. That's trivial. When you know you belong, God takes care of more than we could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. That's it. I think that's what every human being wants more than yeah. anything. And when we don't get belonging, man, we manifest some crazy stuff. But when we do get that we belong, yeah. It's a game changer. Dave, it's such a privilege to have spent time with you, brother. Amazing. You too, man. Thank you guys so much for having me. I love you all so much. Love you, bro. Listen, Bye. I don't know what else to say, but listen, you've been listening to Story, a podcast where storytellers disrupt. We're so honored to have had our brother on for two episodes. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and leave us a message. We'll see you soon. See you soon.